In this video, we'll talk about algebraic statements, which is basically going from a string of words to math symbols. In the first example here, go ahead and write out these words. And I would encourage you to pause the video and write out as many words that you can think of that mean the same thing underneath each of them. For instance, add plus or maybe increased. Subtract might be decrease. Multiply times and divide split, something like that. Assuming you have, we'll just write out the list. Add is sum, plus, more than, increased, combined, or together. Subtract, minus, less than, difference, reduce, decreased, fewer, takeaway. Multiply can mean any of these. I would put a little star by product. And then if you have twice or double, that would multiply it by two, triple, multiply it by three. You can see this is not a complete list. It's just the heavy hitters, the main ones that show up. Of is usually used in percent problems. So if it's like 30% of people, it's going to mean 30% times them. And then two-thirds of something, it's used for fractions. You would also multiply 2 over 3 times something. Finally, divide. I would put a star by quotient, but it could also be half, divide by 2, goes into, shared, or split. And then lastly, let's go ahead and put little dots next to these two, less than and fewer. These are special cases, and you'll see why as the video goes on. We also want to use symbols to represent these things as well. What symbol could we use to represent a number? Maybe you were thinking x, y, and z, anything that is a letter can represent a number, right? Think of I had n donuts earlier. You just don't want to admit it. You know it's a number, but you don't want to say it. So that's why these are just representing something as a placeholder. And as an example, let's say twice a number. Well, we already discussed twice means times 2, a number. So you could just mush them together. 2x, 2n, 2y all mean twice a number. Is is always going to mean equals. So you'll actually put an equal sign in the problem. I know it seems kind of strange, but we'll do that. And quantity is going to be parentheses. For instance, if you saw twice the quantity of a number plus 3, let's just go ahead and write it. Twice is times 2. Quantity, open parenthesis, a number, n or x, plus 3, and then we're done. Just like that. So that is an expression. It doesn't have an equal sign. If it has an equal sign, it's called an equation. But these ones are called expressions. And so there, I've just written it again. Let's jump into the hard stuff now. I mean, that's kind of also hard for a lot of people, but let's jump into these word problems. Feel free to pause and try these, writing them out. And assuming you've done so, I want to highlight this phrase here, less than. One example I always think of is, what is five less than my age? How would I write that? Would I write my age minus five or five minus my age? And if you were thinking that top one, that's right. Because if you did 5 minus my age, that'd give a negative number. That wouldn't make sense. Less than is one that's always going to occur at the end. So if, this is kind of the little dot that I put next to this one. Okay, well, the rest of it is 3 times a number. So that's just going to be 3n or 3x, but then 2 less than it, minus 2 at the end. Of course, you could do, yeah, any, any number there would work. Could be y or whatever. <clears throat> the next one, 3 times the quantity of a number plus 2. Just write it as you say it. 3 multiplied by the quantity of a number plus 2, and then we're done. And then the last one, 5 more than the product of a number and 3. 5 more than, we know that that's going to be plus. Let's write that, 5 plus. Product means multiply, one of the ones we highlighted or put a star by. A number and 3. Now, this part actually does make a difference because often you might just think, well, it's a number multiplied by 3. Let me just write it like that. It kind of looks like it might turn into this, n to the power 3, which is why they'll always put the number in front. So that's why it's 3 and then n like that. All right, let's keep looking. The length of a table is 7 less than 4 times its width. What is an expression for the length? Pause, try both of these out. And assuming you have, let's jump into it. 7 less than we know is going to be at the end. 
And honestly, there's only one of them that even has something at the end, minus 7, and it's that one. That is our answer. Because it's then 4 times its width is the 4w part. Mush those together. Next one, which is 5 less than the product of 3 and a number. 5 less than, we know, has to be minus 5 at the end. The product is times, so it's 3 times a number. And then d has all of that. 3 times a number and then minus 5 at the end. Next board, two more questions to practice. 7 more than the quotient of a number in 2 is 10. Assuming you've paused and tried this out, I just think of it in terms of is is equal. So that's where we're going to have equals 10. It's got to be c or d. These ones would be 7 is, but that's not the way it's phrased, so it can't be a or b. And then from there, quotient is the next keyword. 7 more than, we know that that's plus 7. Quotient means divide, and you divide them in the order you get them. So a number is n, that's first, and 2 is second, so it's going to be d there. Which is 6.8 more than the quotient of 4.3 divided by a number? We do have another quotient here, but let's start off with 6.8 more than. That could be 6.8 plus at the end, or it could be 6.8 plus in the beginning. With addition, it could be in the beginning or the end. That's a little tricky with this one. Quotient, you know, is divide. And then what's the order? Well, it starts with 4.3, so it has to be this one. It can't be this one, because this one has the order backwards for C. So A is one way to represent that. By the way, you could do that and have 4.3 divided by n plus 6.8 at the end. That would also be correct, but that's not what any of the other ones have. And then lastly, 6 less than twice a number is 4. Assuming you've done both of these or paused and, and given them a go. Is, they all have that at the end, is equal to 4. 6 less than is going to be a minus 6 at the end. Could be this one, could be this one and then twice a number. So we know we got a 2. They don't say anything about the quantity, so it's not going to be C. That one's just going to be B there. And lastly, this one's a mouthful, the quotient. We know quotient means the sum. Uh, the sum. Quotient does not mean sum. Quotient means divide. So it's either going to be C or D, because fractions are division. These ones are products. These are not what we have in this problem. The top is the sum of 4 plus 4 and twice a number, which is 2 times x or 2 times n. The bottom is where the difference is, because the tops are actually both identical. But in the bottom, we've got 6 less than. That less than keeps showing up, and it happens at the end, so it has to be d. So I hope that this gives you some confidence moving forward where you can identify key phrases and key patterns within this these types of problems to move forward.